right, here with the legend Kenny Monday. Um, and as a fan, I, I want to dig a little bit deeper into your career. I, I feel like me as a super fan, I've, I've known who you are, I've known what you've done in the sport. There's a lot of details kind of researching and, and trying to figure out who you are as a, as a human being and, and, and your career and your path to your career. Um, there was a lot of things I didn't know. So I, I want to I get your story out there. I want to kind of step through your timeline um, and, and, and just talk about, you know, you growing up in the sport and reflecting on what you've done and, and your accomplishments and just kind of let people know, like, the, the path you took and what, what you've done. So the NCAA champ, three-time Olympian, Olympic champ, you know, you've done stuff on an extremely high level. Now you're here at the RTC uh, at UNC. Um, but you start in Tulsa. The mm -hmm. story starts in Tulsa. Talk a little bit about that growing up in Tulsa and how you get involved in the sport. You know, I mean, it's uh, yeah, growing up in Oklahoma, of course. I mean, Oklahoma was a big, big wrestling state. You know, just a lot of great things coming out of Oklahoma. And, and I just had a, just a great uh, childhood. And just the beginning of my wrestling career started at the YMCA. Had a great coach that uh, Charlie Shivers was our was our head coach at the Y, and um, I kind of followed in behind my, my older brothers Mike and Jim, and uh, Mike is about well Mike is six years older than I am and Jim is four, so Mike started in uh, at the YMCA and after school program after our, our elementary school was like a block from the YMCA, so we would go to the YMCA after school and then our parents would get off work at five and come pick us up, and. Um, we had a guy, Charlie Shivers, that started the program at the Y, and Charlie had wrestled at the University of Oklahoma, so he was an OU grad, and, and so he knew about the sport. So we had a great coach from the start, so fundamentals were on point. And um, at that time in Oklahoma, man, it was just such a rich culture of wrestling. I mean, we had elementary school then, it was like first through sixth grade was elementary, and then ninth through, uh, seventh through ninth was, was junior high school. And uh, we had a full, we had a full team at the YMCA, and um, I mean, we would wrestle all over uh, Oklahoma, all over Tulsa, and uh, I mean, it was probably maybe it was 20, 30 clubs, 30 teams that, that wrestled, and uh, we had a league of wrestling, and we would do dual meets, and you know, I I, I never really had to leave the state of Oklahoma to get competition at that point. That's how rich it was. I mean, I remember guys that I wrestled, with, you know, that were like prodigies as kids, you know, and so it was just a really rich culture, and uh, so wrestling was, was very, uh, very strong, uh, you know, Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma had great teams, of course, uh, Oklahoma State University had a great team, uh, great coaches there coming out of that Myron Roderick uh, era of the 70s, and um, so we are we also able to go down to Oklahoma State and watch um, you know, great teams of Oklahoma State, great teams of University of Oklahoma compete. And uh, so, so you just, grow up watching excellence, I up, I watching exposed, tradition. And I tell people this story. I was exposed to greatness early. You know, because I, I I was born in '61. By the time I started wrestling, by the time I was 10, it was '72. That was a '72 Olympic team, right? And so I got to watch all those guys from that '72 team compete down in Stillwater, Oklahoma, at the U.S. Open. Um, you know, the likes of Dan Gable and. Rick Sanders and uh, Jimmy Carr and uh, Chris Taylor, um, the Peterson brothers. So these are all guys that, that and Wayne Wells, of course. He's an Oklahoma guy. But I was exposed to greatness early, man. It was just so rich for me to see that, uh, that it really set, um, set my dreams in motion as far as being an Olympic athlete, you know, because because that was that 72 team. and. Um, you know, that was my dream from, from the time I saw those guys compete. But you didn't lose a match from like seventh grade through high school. Is that not, correct? I did not. You know, I, <laughs> you know it's funny because I mean, I, I, I took to the sport early and, um, you know, I had a lot of success early. I mean, from, from the time I started, um, I, was, I, was, I was after it. You know, I was after it. And I think, of course, there were some things that happened along the way that, that kind of boosted my, my career and boosted my my mindset in the sport of wrestling, but um, we just had a we just had a rich rich culture in, in, in Oklahoma, and um, of course my brothers were very instrumental, and my parents were very instrumental, and my parents were uh, the kind of parents that, that took us everywhere uh, that we needed to go to get that experience and get the coaching and get the competition, and um, but we didn't we didn't we didn't have to leave Oklahoma. I mean it was so so competitive. Uh, 
Was there ever a doubt you were going to wrestle for anywhere other than Oklahoma State? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, growing up in Oklahoma, I was, of course, I was a big OU fan growing up, you know. Right. And, I, and it's kind of went back and forth. Whoever had kind of the best team, <laughs> I, would, I would kind of lean that way. Right. Now, but we know we had, we had uh, some great, OU had some great teams. And, I mean, they, they were national champions in 1974. Uh, had some guys that came out of Tulsa that, that, that wrestled at uh, uh, Oklahoma. I mean, some of my... My favorite wrestlers, uh, the Brees brothers, Gary Brees and Steve Brees, um, were, were from Tulsa, and they wrestled at OU. And uh, so I was big fans, big Brees fans. And David McQuaig was another one that came out of Oklahoma. Uh, I was a big fan. And so we had, we had child prodigies, man, that, that went to the University of Oklahoma. So I was an OU fan for a long time. And, and actually, my brothers were at OU when I made my decision to go to, go to Oklahoma State. <laughs> my, both, both my brothers were at OU. And so now it was, it was a tough, it was a big recruiting battle. And I, now, I will say this, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to leave Oklahoma. I didn't want to wrestle for any other state coming no. out uh, at that point. Because we were so, again, the, the culture was so strong and uh, we had so much success coming out of Oklahoma that um, when I got old enough to, get, to go on like all-star teams representing the state, and that kind of really solidified my uh, yeah, my, my roots in Oklahoma. Well, talk about your adjustment when you got there. You don't lose a match from seventh grade through high school. You're walking into college thinking, I'm going to be a four-time undefeated I NCAA yeah, champ. And, and that doesn't pan out. So, I mean, talk about that adjustment um, and, and the reality of, hey, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't going to happen. Yeah, it was tough, man. It was tough. You know, I was, again, I was, I was very successful as a kid. I think I went undefeated like the fourth and the fifth grade, and then I lost one time. Uh, to, to Jim Hicks and, and the Tulsa Nationals in the sixth grade, uh, and I didn't wrestle him again from, that, from the sixth grade. I didn't wrestle him again, and he's an Oklahoma kid from Oklahoma City, Del City. Is it Del City? I think so. And then I didn't wrestle him again to my going for my fourth state title. I was undefeated, of course, and I didn't wrestle him again until the finals of my my state title, my going for my fourth state title. How how was you? How what was your thought process going on? Oh man, I wanted to, I wanted to, I've been looking for him all that the whole time from the sixth grade. Right. I was trying to get that match back, <laughs> and you got it and back. I got and it what, back. A, what a great way to do it! I huh? think I beat him like twenty-two to three or something like that. So eighty-four, you win a national title, and I'm looking. Mark Perry, senior, is on that team, right? Yep. He ended up getting six at one eighteen, yep. Yep. which was... blew my mind when I saw that. But you guys got second as a team. You yeah. didn't win the title. Yep, yep, we did. You know, of course, going into, going into Oklahoma State, you know, of course, I had one tie in, in my high school career. And uh, I know you know the story. Uh, Mike Sheets was the guy that tied me. And, um, and so we, we uh, so Tommy Chesbrough said, well, if you tie Monday, then you're, you're coming to Oklahoma State as well. So he recruited Mike, and we both were teammates, and we got to, to wrestle almost every day from that point on. But uh, we had a great class coming in. Mark Perry was a... Uh, was um, on that team. Uh, character. Came in as a freshman. <laughs> what a character. Yep, yep. He has this, I remember Mark coming in. We were on, I think, the All-Star team uh, together. And so we got to hang out on the All-Star team. He came to Tulsa, stayed in my house. I took him to my high school, took him to a high school dance at Booger T. Washington. <laughs> and so we go way back. We right. go way back. And I go way back with John, too. I remember the first time I met John Smith was... Um, I think I was probably 13, 12, 13 years old. John was little. He was probably three or four years old. So he was like 10, 9 or 10, you know, just a little kid running around in Dell City, Oklahoma. And um, so I've, I've been around those guys for a long time. S set the stage for 88 Olympics, defending champ, Varayev. You, you wrestle him in the finals and, and uh, ends up going to overtime. But you're firing off attack after attack after attack, and you're getting in deep on some of them. And you could tell the guy's looking to counter mm -hmm. the whole match. Um, you get the reversal, it, it kind of late in the match to tie it up, then it goes into overtime. Walk, walk, walk through that match and kind of what, what maybe your preparations were going into it, um, and, and knowing that this guy was probably going to be the guy you hit, and then, you know, how it played out. Yeah, Adam Variety was, uh, of course, he was, he was an 87 world champion. Right, he beat Dave in the finals, uh, three, two to one. And um, he, I had wrestled him three times before that. I had wrestled him three times, and so I, I, I kind of knew, we kind of knew each other. And uh, but he had, he beat me twice, and I, and I beat him once. 
they're all close matches, all close matches. And so I knew I could, I knew I could beat him. I knew I was good enough to beat him, but I had to have a have a great match, and I had to keep attacking him. And um, but I was confident going in, just because my training was great. Um, I was wrestling at a, a very high level. I beat Dave, you know, two or three times uh, leading up to that. And so I knew I was good enough. Um, but watching him in the Eddie Saving World Championships, I mean, he was going through them. I mean, he went through that tournament, and so. I knew I had to be at my best. Um, and I knew I had to keep attacking him. You know, but he's strong, man. The guys are strong and fast, and um, you know. There are so, a couple times in that match where you got in deep, and you're, yep. you you're finishing on anybody else yep. in the planet, and and just he ends up getting you getting you off his legs. Yeah, he was the strong, team. man. He was strong. That dude was strong. He catch he was catching my shots, and you know he um, he again he he had kind of knew me just because. We had wrestled before a couple of times. The things that I did, I did to him in other matches. He was ready for him, and he was just strong. He's just a strong guy. Very good, good, good uh, balance, good stance, fast. Um, and so it just really kind of just came down to who had the, you know, who 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 um, who wrestled the best, and um, it just kind of came down to that position that we that I ended up winning the match in an overtime. I actually got from him. The irony there, right? I know, right? So, so you from watching in... him wrestle Dave and studying those those positions, right? He did that that same technique, not the not the body lock, but he he got in that position, I guess Dave to kind of neutralize Dave's front headlock. And so I was playing around with that in practice a lot, a lot, a lot, and so I kind of developed my own uh, technique from there. So you you win the Olympics, first black man on the planet, right, yep. to win an Olympic gold medal in wrestling. Yep. Um, your dad Fred was there, correct? Yeah, yeah. And and I'm watching the match, and he's as cool as a fan the whole time. <laughs> like I'm watching the match a couple weeks ago, and I'm getting antsy, and I know you won. And your old man's just sitting there, just cool. How special was that that a make history for for your culture, but b have your dad there right there watching? It was great, man. I mean, dad, you say he was uh, he was cool, and yeah, that's just kind of how he is. He's cool on the outside, but he's burning up on the inside. <laughs> So nervous. He is so nervous on the inside. And, uh, but you know, he, he you know he lived the life with me. You know, when, from the time I started, he was right there. And you know, a couple years he was coaching, and so he was always very supportive and always. Uh, very, he never wrestled himself, but once we got to wrestling, he kind of learned as we went. Right? right. So he knew he knew me, knew the knew the sport. And you now it was it was special to have him over there. You know, I didn't get my mom didn't get to go, but he was over there and he hung out with John Smith's dad, Leroy, the whole time. So it was really. He was really special for, for two yeah, Oklahoma was, kids to, to be the only, only gold medals to come out of amazing. that. Yeah, that's so amazing. So they, they had a great time. So Bobby Douglas and, and, and Schultz are in your corner yeah, so for this Bobby, So Bobby is the one that actually really kind of brought being the first Olympic champion, first black Olympic champion, to my attention. You know, and I, I've studied wrestling. I kind of knew because, you know, Lee Kemp was a, was a, was a hero of mine and Chris, uh, uh, Chris Campbell and... Um, Gatson and, and Colin Carnes Douglas and, I, and all these Douglas. Guys, yeah. I mean, I've watched these guys for years and just kind of identify with those guys. Sure. You know, because they're African Americans, and so I always followed them. And I knew probably Lee Kemp was probably be the he would have probably been the one that to, to be an Olympic champion. Three-time world champ. Three-time world champ. Made the team in '80. They boycotted. He didn't get to go, but he was you know '81 world champ. You know '79 world champ. So he would have won, and uh, he didn't get that opportunity. And so um, so it wasn't. Bobby brought that up. It kind of made it, you know, brought it to my attention. I mean, it really kind of elevated my um, my motivation. It really did. I mean, it really it kind of gave me a, a different uh, a different focus because now it was it's not even about me winning. It was really about setting that standard and being the first. And anytime you had an opportunity to be the first in anything, I don't care if it's shooting marbles. You know, it's a, sure. it's a great thing. Right, so that that gave me some, it gave me a deep down motivation, a deep down inspiration that I know that would last a lifetime. So, you kind of didn't add any more pressure though. It didn't, <laughs> didn't add any more pressure. I was like, thanks, Bobby. Right. Thanks for giving me that. Did, but yeah. I mean, Bobby Douglas has been so instrumental yeah, in so yeah, many absolutely. guys' lives, and absolutely. and we talk about the what ifs with 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 Schultz and yeah. and what he would have gone on to do. But what he what he did while he was there, I mean, he elevated your level right. as an athlete to a point to maybe you never win an Olympic title without having that rivalry with him. But 
you have a rivalry with this guy and he's in your corner and it was just if he couldn't be there he would rather you be there talk about not only the rivalry with with Dave but like what that guy meant to you in your career you know Dave was, was special you know he was, he was just a special human being and the things that he did like you know after I beat him and made the team and he was very uh, very gracious and very um, willing to help and I'm not for sure I would have done that you know <laughs> you know right. what I mean uh, that's just kind of guy he was but um, you now Bobby was 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 really um, going way back my, my oldest brother Mike um, was Bobby's first recruit at Arizona State so that was his first college he went to Arizona State first so I was introduced to Bobby you know back in the, in the you know 70 72 to 3 and got to be around him a little bit and learn from him of course with his books and that whole thing and so I had a long history with Bobby Douglas and so it was just special to have him my my special Olympic coach when, we, when I made the team but Dave was just uh, of course he, he made me great he, he made me um, he kept me up at night he got me up in the morning and I knew that if I could if I could beat Dave that I could beat anybody in the world because he was such such a competitor and such a, a, a in, um, intelligent wrestler I mean, and, he, and he was he was tough he was he was um, he was mean and he was intelligent and so there are some, some levels that I had to get through to be able to overcome Dave um, that just and plus you know, everybody loved Dave you know USA Wrestling loved him and of course Mark and Dave was was the, was the darlings coming out of 84 defending Olympic champions and uh, they were already promoting those guys to to be on the 88 team and you know, I kind of came in and kind of kind of stopped that promotion a little bit, but uh, no, he took me to another level, man. He he really did. And um, then once I made the team, he was he was in training camp, and, and of course he was he was there to help Mark as well. But he was like, Kenny, anything I can do to help you, um, I'm here for you, right? So we wrestled a lot in training camp. Yeah, every day he was like, you, you want to wrestle? And so I, a couple of times we, we would wrestle, right? You ever get choked out in the front headlock? No, <laughs> not in practice. Not in practice. So look, looking back, and you don't strike me as a a, a, a very braggart type of guy. You seem like a very humble kind of back in the cut type of guy. Looking back on, and I'm gonna ask you to be for a second. Looking back on your career, young man coming from Tulsa, Oklahoma, grows up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, goes undefeated from pretty much fifth grade through high school, right. except for this one dad gum character. Right. Um, you win an NCAA title, you win an Olympic title, you don't only win an Olympic title, but you set the bar for black men around the world. Um, when, you, when, you, when you hang your hat up at the end of your career, I mean, and, and not, to, not to wash over the fact you won a silver medal as well in the Olympics, right. and then you go back 96 Olympics, um, Satyev kind of has his coming out party, um, but you know, just just sitting in a rocking chair on your front porch and reflecting on your career, man. What what does that what does that mean to you as a as a individual, as a as a father, as a husband, um, and a, as an African American in, in in the world today? You know, it's uh, you know, it was it's been an amazing journey. You know, it really has. And, and one of the the greatest things that that I have experienced out of being an Olympic champion and, and being. Uh, at that level of success in the sport of wrestling is that um, it gave me a platform to really share share my story and to touch so many other kids. You know, you'd be you'd be surprised at how many um, just families and fathers and sons and, and, and wrestlers that I've touched over the years. And, and they come up to me now as grown men that I maybe inspired as when they were a little kid. And I coached them or they were watching and they were wrestling because I I uh, my my success you come up to me and say, man, you were a big inspiration to me, and I'm wrestling because you, you know, when I saw you win, you know, it inspired me. And, and so just having that platform to, to, to touch people all over the world and share my story and share my journey uh, is probably the biggest part of that, you know. And then also being able to um, bring my family into that, right, and have them share in that success and in the story of that. And so it's been an amazing journey, and it's... Um, I enjoy it every day. Every day I wake up an Olympic champion, and uh, they can never take that away, you know. But uh, just had some great, 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 great stories and some great uh, experiences. All been all over the world. Wrestling has taken me all over the world. And um, going back to to that match, that final match that Dave and, and Bobby was in. You know, Dave came in. It was in, in the final match. 
and came up to me and said, said Kenny, do you, do you mind if I, if I sit in your corner? And, um, and so I thought about it for a little bit, you know, and I thought about it for a little bit and I kind of, I said, well, let me think about it. And then so I, I came back and probably, you know, 10 minutes, I said, all right, man, all right, you, you, I'm, I'm good with that. And the reason I did that is, is because of his willingness to, to help me in training camp. You know, I mean, he was there and uh, he was selfless and anything, whatever he could do. Uh, I don't think it was like trying to self-promote himself or anything like that, even though he did have a fox catch a shirt on. <laughs> but uh, no, but Dave was just that kind of guy, man. He was, he was really um, um, willing to, to do whatever he could to help, you know. So that's why I was kind of, you know, allowed him to sit in my corner. And then, after I won, then he put me on his shoulders and ran me around the mat, you know. And, uh, but he was, he, was, uh, he was good to have in the room, and he was good to have in, uh, in training camp. He came up to me. And, and, and which really kind of inspired me too. Like we're, I think it was like the last day that we were having practice before the Olympics started. He goes, Kenny, pulls me over to the side. You got to kind of know Dave. You kind of know his, his, you know, his ways, you know. But he was like, um, hey, so we were talking to, to the Russians and man, they, they're like Monday, oh, no problem, no, no problem. Why come you're not on the, on the team? They couldn't understand why Dave wasn't on the team. Like Monday beat me. He's, he's the best guy, and and he's gonna he's gonna be very tough to beat. And he's like, oh no, no Monday, no problem, no problem. So that really fired me up. <laughs> and Dave made sure he told me that, but that fired me up. I was so freaking ready to go show the world that uh, I was the best. So the Puma name is actually between you and another individual like I understood it as like it was all the Russians but but you explained to me that it was initially started explain that how, how the Puma name came it was in uh, on a Tbilisi tour on a Tbilisi tour and um, which was the like, toughest tournament in the planet because back then it was USSR yep. and they only sent there was a national team. Right, and now it's split up into a gazillion different teams. Right, right. But back then, all the Russians went to Tbilisi. The Soviet Union. So it was it was tougher than the Olympics. Right. It, was, it was tougher than the World Championship some years in the Olympics. So like, just to just to set the tone for that. Yeah. So so I went to Tbilisi twice. I went '87, and Dave was on that tour as well. Dave won the tournament in '87. He won Tbilisi in '87. I think I got fifth. The next year, Dave went, but he didn't wrestle. And so I, that's the year I won. But we would always do like two, uh, three dual meets on that tour. So we'd do three, do, uh, three dual meets, um, a different team, Russian teams, different guys, and then we'd go to the tournament. So that was like 11 matches that I, I wrestled that year uh, on that tour. And one of the guys that were, I think he was 68 kilo. Now, I, I forget his name, this Russian guy, but he was really tough. And uh, so we kind of hit it off, we exchanged some, some some gifts and that kind of thing, and so he kind of showed me around, and uh, so we kind of just hit it off, and we just kind of started teasing each other, and uh, and he was like a real strong, but he was like very uh, controlled. He a lot of throws, a lot of arm throws, and he didn't move a lot, right? And I'm like, dude, you you're you're also like a you're like a warrior. You're, you're slow. You're like a big bear. You know, you you just kind of plot around. He goes, yeah, you're like a little little puma. You you're like a black puma. You're, you're so fast and moving. You do you move too much, you know. And, uh, and so, so then every time he saw me, he would say, Puma, Black Puma, and he'd laugh. <laughs> the Black Puma. And so it just freaking stuck, man. And those, all those guys, all those Russian guys. And then I won that tournament. Right, so now, now, when I went to Blissey, and I got that white cape, and so he was in the back going, Puma, 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 <laughs> Puma. And so all these kids were at the tournament. And I was like the Pied Piper because I was giving, of course, I was giving them gum. I was feeding these guys gum so they'd cheer for me right. at the tournament. <laughs> and, uh, and they were all screaming, boom up, boom up. And it just, from that, from that, that year, it just kind of stuck. And so when it came back, you know, that was kind of the story that uh, they were saying, like, where'd the Puma come I heard them saying, Puma, where'd that come from, right? <laughs> and so that's kind of how it started. So fast forward now, you got the, role, the roles changed. So your your coach, your mentor, your dad, yeah. you, got, you got your wife Sabrina, you got you got Quincy and Kennedy yep. at, at wrestling. You're down here with Kennedy. Quincy's up at Princeton. Um, talk a little bit about me and you. Actually, had a little sidebar conversation a, a bit ago about about coaching kids yeah. and trying to separate dad and coach. Um, 
Talk a little bit about what you've taken from your career and the coaches, the, the amazing coaches you've had with, you know, with, with Douglas and, you know, Dave helping some and, right, and Bruce right. Burnett and some of those guys, Barnett and some of those guys coming through. Like, what, what are your takeaways and what are you applying now to make sure your sons have the same experience and enjoy the platform that you helped build the foundation for? Right, right, right. Absolutely. And I, again, I was so blessed to be able to be exposed to so so many great wrestlers, you know, from the Oklahoma State wrestlers back in the day in the 70s, I can talk to you about that. And But being being around some of the best coaches, being around, being in training camps with Dan Gable, being around, around uh, Douglas and um, um, Chesbro, and, um, just so many different guys that I was around that I learned so much from, you know, and I'm just like, a, I'm a sponge. And I'm just, I'm taking a little bit from these guys. I take a little bit from Gable, I take a little from Douglas. Chesbro, Myron Roderick was, a, was a, a, another great source that I got to know growing up. Uh, he was the athletic director when I was there at Oklahoma State. Um, being around then, then being teammates with John Smith and Mike Sheets. and um, So these guys really kind of shaped my whole um, philosophy about wrestling, about you know just uh, working your butt off, putting yourself in the right environment. So I'm so big about putting yourself in the right environment where you know you got like-minded people, people that, that, that you love training with, right? They got a, a energy and a, um, an excitement about about competition. Um, and so just try to give them my experience and give them my um, just my 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 philosophy on, on, on wrestling and how to approach, you know, and, and they gotta do their own journey and I one of the biggest things that, that they struggle with, I think they struggle with early, is just being the, the sons of Olympic gold medalists, right? But a lot of the pressure comes from, and I, and I explained it to them, a lot of pressure comes from other people. It doesn't come from me, you know, because it's, it's their own journey. Of course, uh, you know, we're going to work hard. And, and I told them, now, I can show you all the technique in the world. I can show you all, the, all that, you know, but it's, um, you can't get around the work. It's hard work, it's dedication. If you want to be good, if you want to be great, you've got to dedicate yourself to the sport, right? And, um, but I never get caught up in, in um, you know, trying to, trying to have them emulate my success, right? I want them to, to have their own journey, which they are doing now. And they, they got their own path that they're doing. I'm really happy about that. I just merely wanted to, exp to um, expose them to the sport, introduce them to the sport, um, and they had them take off of how they how they want to take off. Now, I mean, they're at the point now where I feel like their styles are good enough that they can win. It's just about what they want out of the sport. And they can. I, I feel. I feel like they're they're good enough to do whatever they want to do in the sport. Right. It's just how, just as far as what they want out of the sport, how hard they want, how hard they want to work, or what they're willing to sacrifice. Just you know what they want to do with it, right? So they're good enough to do whatever they want to do in sport. Right?